So today we're going to look at doing hypothesis tests on means when we do not have the standard deviation of the population. So if we don't have the standard deviation of the population, right, our next best thing to use will be the standard deviation from our sample. Okay. So sigma unknown, so remember sigma, this is the standard deviation from the population. So if we don't know that, we'll use S, which is the standard deviation from a sample, instead. Now the other change um, that you'll notice from when we did z-tests for means is that instead of using z-values for our critical values, we're going to use t-values for our critical values. So we're just going to use the t distribution. Aside from that, everything else is going to be the same. We're going to find our hypotheses. We're going to identify the claim. We're going to figure out our critical values. We're going to find our test value. I'm going to let the calculator do it. Don't worry, I'll show you the formula again in case you like that better. Um, we'll make a decision. We'll write a summary. OK, so first example, average starting salary for nurses is uh, 66,910. Local recruiter thinks the starting salary in her region is different. Stop. Those are your two hypotheses. So let's go ahead and write those down. So it's kind of like step one. The first thing we do is we write our hypotheses. So the null hypothesis. So I want you to go ahead and write H sub zero so that we'll know who is who. And we're talking about averages. So that means my parameter is mu. So 66, 9, 10. Now, when we're doing these problems here in the exercises, or if you're working out of a homework set, it's kind of, um, it can be confusing because you can see all of the values there. So it's a little bit hard to pick out which one are the hypotheses and which one is the actual data. So the hypotheses come from some sort of statement that somebody makes at the start. Okay? And then later, right, the information that we're gonna quote unquote gather is from the sample that, that happened later. So we have to pretend like we can't see beyond right, these first couple of sentences. So there's our null. The average is um, 66, 9, 10. So the is is the equal. That makes it the null. A local recruiter thinks the starting salary in her region is different. So it doesn't say more than or less than. It just says different. And different leads us to a not equal for the alternative hypothesis. So h sub 1, mu does not equal 910, or 66, 910, and that is going to be the claim, because that's what the, the local recruiter is trying to show. OK, so we do our hypotheses and our claim. That's our first step. Um, let's go ahead, and we're going to gather out the info that's up there. So I'll switch colors. So our info, this is now, right, we're going into the sample. Right, so we're doing the sample, we're reading about the sample information. So we're going to read our next sentence. She then surveys 30 nurses. So 30 is how many people she surveyed. So that gets an N equals 30. Finds their average starting salary. So this is the average from that sample. So that's an X bar is 61,682. And the standard deviation for the sample, so that's an S, equals 2244. And then test your claim, so we have alpha is 0 0.05. OK, so we've gathered our info. Next thing we need to do is let's go find those critical values. So our critical values are going to be from the t distribution. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my t distribution. And the t-distribution is based on degrees of freedom. So I guess I need my degrees of freedom. So for the t-distribution, degrees of freedom are equal to n minus 1, or in this case, 29. So 30 minus 1. So here we go. I'm coming back. So now I need to put some things together. I have my alpha value. And you can see up at the top here, right, they have a bunch of different alpha values. 
but I have to decide am I one tail or two tails for the alpha, right? Does it all go into one side or am I splitting it between two? And we tell by the symbol in the alternative hypothesis. So since this hypothesis has a not equal to, so not equal leads us to two tail. Okay, so I need to find the two tail alpha of 0 0.05. So I'm gonna come over to the two tail row to the 0 0.05 column. And now I'm gonna go all the way down until I get to 29. So it's white on my sheet. So I'm gonna come across, it looks like 2.045 is my critical value. So my critical value, it's a T value, 2.045. Now, it's a two tail. My t, my t distribution only gives me positive values, but since it's two tail, I now have a plus and a minus. It's on both sides. So I'm going to come on over here to my graph. I'm going to put those in. So it's zero in the middle, just like on our z. And then, right, we're going to go ahead and mark off some integers. And I need to make my, so it's like my breaking point is at 2.045 plus or minus. So here's positive 2, so just a little bit beyond that. And here's my negative 2, so just a little bit beyond that. So in the tails here is the rejection region. If our test value goes beyond that out in this shaded area, then we're going to reject our null hypothesis. So now we have to figure out where is our test value in relationship to these critical values. So now we need the test value grab a new color. I guess we'll go back to green. So our test value comes from the sample. And it has a general flavor and we'll, we'll do this more um, later when we talk about contingency tables. But for now it's, so it's observed what you see from your sample minus the expected, what you expect from the null hypothesis, right, divided by the standard error. So in this case observed minus expected, and then the standard error is s over the square root of n. So I'm going to go, I am going to use my calculator, don't worry, but if you um, are not a huge calculator fan and are going to use it as little as possible, this is the formula and you can just plug everything in. Be careful if you're having your calculator do this particular calculation because um, you need the parentheses or it's going to lead you into um, bad territory. So subtract the numerator in parentheses. So observed, the mu comes from your um, hypotheses. And then S, 2244, over the square root of 30. I didn't give myself very much room on these. Sorry about that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my calculator. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use that stat test button. Don't, okay, I'll come back and I'll show you that one in a second. So stat test. Now this is a T test. So I don't want to choose option one. I want to choose option two. So I can either arrow down or I can hit the number two. So data or stats. So it's data if you have information in the list. I don't. I just have these stats that I'm going to put in. Mu naught comes from in the null hypothesis, that value there. X bar is from your sample. So this is why that gathering the info, it's important to write um, the appropriate symbol down because then it guides you into what to put in here when we do our calculator work. So n is 30, I just keep going. So this line here, this is the alternative hypothesis. So my alternative hypothesis has a not equal symbol. So I want to be on the not equal symbol and hit enter and then down to calculate. And there we go. It's that second line that tells me the, the test score. So this is my test value from my sample. So t equals negative 12.76. So my test value is negative 12.76 according to my calculator. Okay, so before I go on, let me show you, if you were gonna put this in your calculator, so now I'm just gonna show you the keystrokes for doing that if you didn't like doing the stat test. So you have to do parentheses 61682 minus 66910. Close those parentheses, and now we're going to divide. And now parentheses around the whole bottom so that it does the division 
that's down there before it does the big division. Thank you, I see that. And then square root is here by the squared button. Right there, it's in blue, so the blue button first, and then 30, and then close. Right, and so we, it gives us the same value. Okay. All right, <sighs> okay, so here we go. I've got my test value, so now I'm going to come up here on my graph, and where does negative 12.76 live in relationship to the negative 2 and positive 2? Right, so it's way the heck over here to the left, very firmly in our rejection region. So our decision, remember the decision is always about the null hypothesis, and this time it will be to reject that null hypothesis. We don't think that it's true that the average is 66, 9, 10, because our value is so much different. So that means in our summary or conclusion. So when we reject, we get to be very firm in our statement here. So there is enough evidence. Okay, so we're rejecting the null, so we say that's bad. So we get to support our claim. To support the claim, the average salaries are different. Okay, next one. I'll try to write smaller, scoot over to the left a little bit more. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to write your hypotheses, gather your info, find your critical values, find your test value, make a decision, write the summary. Average movie goer sees eight and a half movies per year. Okay, well that's the null hypothesis, right? So let's go ahead and write that. Average is eight and a half. Now I don't know yet what the alternative is, but I do know it's a mu and I do know it's an 8.5. So I'll go ahead and get those set up and now let's read a little bit further. A random sample of 40. Okay, so now they're starting to give us the info, right? So let's go ahead and write the info down. Random sample of 40, so that's an N. Reveal the average number was 9.6. So that's from that sample of 40. So X bar is 9.6. The population standard deviation. Oh, this is sneaky. So I'm going to say, I'm, I'm fixing it on the fly. The sample standard deviation, so S, is 3.5. At the alpha is 0.05, level of significance. Can it be concluded this represents a difference? Okay, there's that difference again. Now that's giving us a clue, right, the clue for the alternative. So I'm going to put a not equal to, and then that will also be our claim. Okay, so critical values. So I had to do my little change here, the population to the sample, because we're supposed to be in the T section. So this question just kind of slipped in. So using the T distribution, because we have the sample standard deviation, so alpha is 0.05, two-tail test, N is 40. So then degrees of freedom and minus one, so 39. Okay, so I don't have on my list, I don't actually have a 39, so I'm gonna go up to the 38. So I'm gonna take the 38 across until I get everything together. So two tails alpha, 0.05, that column, down to the row that corresponds to 38. So 2.024. 2.024 are my critical values. And then plus or minus, again, because T tables only give you the positive, but you have to be able to get the negative. So again, those are right there next to, did I have the last time? Oh, it's almost the same, isn't it? So just, just beyond your plus or minus two. So rejection region in the tails. So now we're going to get our test value. So if you want to go ahead and write it out, so observed 
minus expected divided by s over the square root of n. Or for those of you who want to do what I'm going to do and do the tests, it's a t-test. We still have stats. So in the first spot, we put the value from the null hypothesis, x bar from our sample, s from our sample, n from our sample, the alternative hypothesis, and calculate. So our t value, our test value, is 1.99. I'm going to go ahead and round. So where does that live? Oh, it's very close, isn't it? So this was just beyond the 2. So 1.99 is just to the left of the 2. But that is in that fail to reject region, that, that meaty middle part. So our decision will be um, do not reject h not. So when you don't reject the null hypothesis, right, it's possible you're making a mistake, right? This is that type 2 error. It's possible we're making one. We don't, we don't have a way to, to estimate how, how large of a chance it is that we're making that mistake. So what we do is we say there's not enough evidence. So we're not going to be very definitive here. There is not enough evidence. So we're not going to reject the null hypothesis, so we don't have enough evidence to support the claim that the average number of movies is not eight and a half. Okay, so let's do this last one. And this last one, we're going to do an example using data. So these are the number of calories in a serving, oh, it says the number of calories in a serving of Reese's Puffs is 120. So these um, are the number of calories per serving um, in my pantry right now. So that's not an average, those are the actual numbers. So can I claim that the cereals in my pantry have fewer calories than the Reese's Puffs? And we'll use alpha as 0.1. So here we go. So we're talking about averages, so mu equals. And this time, right, what we actually see, can I claim that my pantry have fewer calories than Reese's Puffs? So I'm going to say, is my average less than the 120 that was Reese's Puffs? So we kind of, I didn't, right, there's not the is giving us the null hypothesis first. Instead, we have information about the alternative. But once I know the alternative, then I also know the null. And can I claim that they're less? So that makes the alternative the claim. So now when we go to gather our info, we actually have to use our calculator for this, because I don't know what the x bar is, and I don't know what um, the standard deviation is. So I'm going to go ahead and put my calculator up. And we're going to go to the stat. Do you remember how to do this? So stat, edit, and I'll clear out some space here. So now we're going to input into L1 this, right, calories for the cereals that I currently have. So 130, and I'm just using enter in between. Oh, I'm sorry, did you see how I cleared in case you forgot? So use your arrows. I'll start over all the way up to the top. Clear, enter, takes us to here. And now I'm just going to input those cereals. And I'm going to look them over, make sure. OK. And then it was stat. Go ahead and pause if you need to catch up. Stat. And now we're going to calculate one variable statistics on that wherever you put yours. Mine was in L1. So now. There is all of that data. I'm going to move my calculator just because I'm right-handed. So I need x bar is 120.625. Um, S, because it's a sample, is about 36.3. And n is the other value I need, and that's 8. Make sure you take the standard deviation for the sample and not for the population. Okay. 
Um, let's see, was there anything else I needed? Oh, I need alpha is 0.1, and the degrees of freedom will be 7. So in this time, I have a one tail on the left, right? So this is one tail left. So let's go ahead and get our critical value from that T table. So I'll put my T table back. I have one tail alpha, and it's a 0.1. So I'm in this first column on my table. And I want to come down to a degrees of freedom of 7. So that says 1.415. My critical value is 1.415, except I'm on the left, right? So that means this has to be negative, because it's zero in the middle of our t distribution, just like the z. So I'll go ahead and label some of these. I, I've been bad about labeling just because of space. So my critical value, negative 1.4. So that's kind of like somewhere here in between. And it's on the left-hand side. So right, this is 10% of the area is to the left of that line. And 90% of the area is to the right. If my test value falls in that 90%, then it's right, pretty likely that the null hypothesis is true. Okay, if it falls beyond it, if it falls over in that 10%, Right, well, there's a 10% chance it was true. We're just not sure. Okay, so here we go. So let's go ahead and find our test value. So stat tests, option two, t test. Oh, hey, you know what I can show you? So I'm on the t test. So let's go ahead and tell it, hey, we're just going to give you the data. So mu naught, we're going to put in the 120. On the list, we're going to tell it where you put your data. So mine was in L1, so I'm going to tell it L1. And L1 right here is down on the 1 button. So blue key first and then L1. Okay, so put that there. I don't have a frequency, so I'll leave that alone. Just like before, tell it what your alternative hypothesis is. So mine was a less than, so I did that. And calculate. And look, it gave us the... the um, average for our sample and the standard devi deviation as well. And write the second line, still that is our test value, 0 0.05, right? 0 0.0487 or 0 0.05. So our test value, 0 0.05, right, if I round. And I'm gonna round because I can tell that I'm far enough away. So it's positive, it's over here. Right, it's probably even closer to zero, but it's definitely in that um, do not reject region. Right? So this is our fail to reject region, and this is our rejection region. Okay? So our decision will be do not reject the null hypothesis. Remember, your decision is always about the null hypothesis, and your summary is always about the claim. So. When your decision has a not, your summary has the word not in it as well. So there is not enough evidence to do something. So let's see what we can't do. So do not reject the null hypothesis. So this one might be okay. So there's not enough evidence to support the claim the calories of my cereals is less than 120. Okay, so use t-tests, and really the only thing that changes is while well, you use the t-test button on your calculator, and you get your critical values from the t-distribution. We do this. We use the t-test when we're doing hypothesis, te hypothesis tests on means if sigma is unknown.